Hello, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Today we're going to take a look on how we can automatically index new created documents in a SharePoint library. A user asked me if, uh, similar to a video that I already done when we automatically index SharePoint list items, if that can also be done for, for, for documents. Because the problem we have with documents is that if, for example, as you can see on the screen, if the invoice one uh, or invoice underscore one already exists, then you can either overwrite it or you will run into an error where you cannot create that document in this library. So what you need to do is then to add like a second name or maybe a, another number so that it's not uh, overwritten and so that you end up with another document. Long story short, let's take a look how we can do this in practice. And um, yeah, I hope you have fun with the video. If you do so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And also activate the bell if you want to be notified for the next video. Thanks, have fun. Okay, so let's take a look how we can do this in practice. First, I want to ask you if you think it's okay with me being uh, this large on the, on the what is that, on the left-hand side of the screen. Let me know in the comments if this is too distracting or disturbing. Um, I will um, make sure that I go really small on the corner for the next video. But let me know in the comments what you think. So let's take a look on how we can create this uh, workflow. And to do so, as I said, because we are going with the Microsoft Forms, um, form uh, we are going to um, triggering this workflow automatically so i'm going to select automatic cloud flow and i'm going to give it a name maybe indexing documents demo something like that and i'm going to select the when a new response is submitted trigger click create so let's pick a form i have here my form it's called invoice submission i have here a couple of questions uh, like company address phone email and so on and so forth so the questions are yeah not very important you can think of it um, for your use case um, but what i have here at the bottom is um, the question number seven which has the documents so i've called it doc as well and uh, what I'm doing here, I'm limiting this upload document or upload file the question to one file. And um, I have placed the single file size limit to 100 megabytes. And last, I have also limited the file type to PDF. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter. You can have whatever you want. Uh, it's just for showing you that you can do this as well. Okay, so um, yeah, and also I have here a demo library with a folder where I'm going to save the files. That's it. The, all, all of the rest is going to happen in PowerTomate. Okay, so um, let's select the invoice submission. That's my form. And next step would be the get uh, responses, the response or response details, yeah. So this one, and then the form ID is the one from here, the same invoice submission, and the response ID is going to be um, is going to be the response ID from my when a new response submitted. So I'm gonna select that, and next I want to initialize a variable. The reason I do this is because I want to see later on in the um, in the workflow how many uh, files are in this folder and based on that i want to do the counting and then also a couple of ifs and additions we will see in a second and i place that into my variable you know, that value and then i'm going to use that variable into the create file um, in the name of that file section because I don't want to do all that, um, let's say, code in that create file action step, but I want to do it before in the initialize variables section. So let's uh, search for initialize variable. And this will be my var, let's call it um, doc number. And it's going to be an integer. Okay, so next I want to see if there are any files or documents in that folder. So for that, I'm going to do a, a get files. And a get files is a standard um, SharePoint uh, connector. And we are going to use the properties only. Because what we want to do from this response is 
to measure the length of the response body. Now, so that way we can see how many files are in the folder. So let me select here my site address real quick. This is a project management. The library is the demo library. And I'm going to limit um, this entries, so the, the entries to a specific folder, which is in my demo library. And as you saw, is the folder number two. Okay, so next we are going to set the variable. And here's where we are going to do the calculation of the already existing um, documents in the folder. So we want to check if a folder already exists or let's say if the if the folder is empty, not the folder already exists, if the folder is empty, so no, no files are there, um, it will return uh, zero. So the body of the response get files will be empty. So that means it's zero. But we don't want to have like invoice zero. No, we want to have invoice one. So we're doing going to do an if statement where we are going to say, okay, if the length of the response of this get files uh, step that we are doing before is zero, which means the folder is empty, then write one. If it is uh, not zero, which means is one or higher, um, then use the length of the um, of the body plus one and add one. No? So if it's empty, if it's zero, it will write one. If it's one, then it will write two because one already exists and so on and so forth. No? So um, let's go back here. I had to zoom out a little bit so that we can see here this expression um, expression tab. And uh, otherwise, if I zoom in, it's pretty weird because you see it like that, but the expression tab is missing. Or maybe I don't see it. Let me know in the comments if you know where it is. It looks like a mobile view. Okay, so let's zoom out and go to the expression section. And here's where we are going to place that code. So I've already prepared it. So let's take a look at it together and in a little bit bigger um, yeah, way, because if I write it here, uh, it's not that easy to see it. I need to go to the experimental features. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here, the I'm getting the length, no, no, I'm getting the outputs from get files properties only, right? So this is this is from from this um, from this action here, and also the body value, because that's where the values are, no? where it's going to show the files, and <clears throat> this section here, the length, it will calculate the length of that um, of the values. So it will return 0, 1, 2, 3, based on how many um, values are in this outputs response. And what I'm doing here is I'm comparing if this length is equals 0, then this is the true, um, res uh, the true part of the if statement, no? the true and false. So if it that's true, then write a one. Otherwise, if the length is not zero, no, it's here, I'm going to add to this length one. No, so it becomes then one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth and so forth. Okay, I hope you understood it. Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's just weirdly written in a Power Automate way and manner. So let's, let's uh, use that. And I'm going to paste it in the expressions, click OK, and then there we have it. OK, so um, next, now that we have our variable, we want to do um, a pass JSON. But let's take a look first um, how we can get that pass JSON structure schema that we need uh, so that we can use it here. To do so, we need to save this um, doc document demo or this workflow and test it out. So let's say manually click test, I'm going to the uh, form here, click preview and let's uh, do some tests here. Test one, test one, let's copy that, one, two, three, email, product, amount, doesn't matter. And then let's upload one file. So I have uploaded now a PDF file and I'm going to click Submit. 
and now the flow is running and let's take a look here in the get files properties output what's saying it's saying nothing because it's empty yeah, so we see here that the value in this uh, you can see here in this square brackets no yeah, that's where the items are listed no, in this array so if it's empty then the length is zero and then it means that the folder is empty Okay, so let's take a look a bit higher. We have here the get responses details, and here are the answers from our uh, form. They are a bit weirdly arranged, but that's okay. And we have here this question doc. Uh, this has a, a JSON format itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Now uh, this is our upload file question in the form, and. I'm going to use this in a past JSON action. So I'm going to click edit now, new step, pass JSON, pass JSON, there it is. The content is now coming from get response details doc, no? so from that question. So I'm going to click that and it will be placed here. Again, this view is only because I'm zoomed in. So in the schema, at the bottom, I'm going to click generate from sample and I'm going to paste yeah, the payload from that we just copied from, from the response. Click done and that should be uh, good to go right? because we now have the um, schema that we need. Okay, so next we need to get that file because um, that file, when it's been submitted, it's saved in a OneDrive folder. So let's search for the get file content action from OneDrive and to find that file instead of clicking here to this uh, body section I'm going to use this second code here which says pass JSON and give me the first from the first array you know, from the first item in the array sorry the ID because I want the ID of that document no, because if I click here in this ID, this is in the body and this will create this apply to each loop, which we don't need. No? So let's undo that and let's write here. I need to zoom out, unfortunately. Well, let's copy paste this actually. Why am I writing it? Let's copy this one and paste it here. The at icon needs to go away and click OK and then we have it here. So this way we skip that apply to each loop, we don't need that, and then we specifically ask for the first item in that array and give me its ID. We write zero because the incrementing numbers start, start from zero in, in these arrays. Okay, so this, this, this way we have then our, um, our file content. Now, last but not least, we need to create that file in our folder. And let's search for the create file action in SharePoint. And select here my site address, uh, project management, and all the specific folder where I want to have them. That's in my demo library, folder number two. And now I'm going to create the name. Now, so we are going to uh, so we are, we are receiving invoices in this case, so let's write invoice and um, I'm going to underscore and I'm going to use this var doc number. So it's maybe a bit bigger now. So the var doc number is the, the one that we created here in the set variable. And of course I want the ending. Since I limited it to only PDFs, I can statically uh, write it here what the ending is. Otherwise I will have to get the ending of the documents that are being uploaded, also extract it and then use it here. So it makes it a bit easier if you have limited. And of course the file content is coming from the get file content action that we did before. Let's click that. And this is has you know, the body from that get file content. Okay, so I think that's all of it. Let's test it out. And because we already uploaded, no, no we don't didn't upload anything yet because that step was not there, but we already tested it. So let's use that automatic test from last time. So the set variable, it will have now one. Hmm. Let's take a look here. 
refresh and we have here our first document um, I don't know if we can see here the get files property so this was yeah the, I, I cannot show you if, if it says zero and then if the set variable makes it to one unfortunately but I assure you it was zero now you saw the folder was empty but what we can do is we can run it again because it doesn't matter if the document's the same we are renaming it every time since we are calculating uh, the documents that already are there so this is running the run let's refresh and we can see that the next one a few seconds ago is called number two so now um, this is a simple example on how you can increment uh, or create an, like an index or an increment incrementation uh, of your uh, documents and files but you need to also consider other stuff, maybe um, what happens if I delete one, if maybe if you want to have that order as well. And if you do so, then you can refer to my uh, previous video where I showcase a dynamic indexing with SharePoint list items. The same can be done also with libraries since you know, libraries and lists are pretty much the same. And that way you can ensure that if you, for example, have invoice one, two, three, and you delete two, and you want them to be not one, three, but one, two, then you can use that logic as well for that one. And um, yeah, there are probably uh, a thousand other stuff that you need to take into consideration based on you know, uh, countless uh, use cases that are out there. But I hope this helps you uh, achieve what you're looking for. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I hope uh, you liked the, the video. If you did so, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you in the next one. Bye.